often say when I was studying for my CCNA, I was taking these boats and exam preps. I did not pass, not am one of them, you know, and that's my country accent coming out that am one of them. I didn't pass it. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT industry, whether it's for a career change or you're just interested, I think you come to the right place. Are you studying for the CCNA and want to get some hands-on practice? Well, today you're in luck because today's video comes from a listener question and that listener asked if I knew any online labs or simulations that they can use to practice their technical skills or get their technical skills set up. Well, of course, you know your boy got you. So today, I got some Cisco focused labs as well as some networking emulators to help you out along your journey. So let's get to it. So the first category I want to look at is some Cisco specific or some Cisco focused simulation tools and applications that you can use. So the first one that comes to mind, of course, is Cisco's Packet Tracer. So Packet Tracer is a free application. You will need an account to log in though, but you can get that account from the Cisco Networking Academy website. Like I said, it's, it's a beginner friendly tool. It's good for CCNA level training. For, so if you're studying for your CCNA, Packet Tracer is your one-stop shop. But basically you download this application to your PC and then you can go in and configure your own network. Or if you have some labs that someone has saved or created in Packet Tracer, you can load those labs up into Packet Tracer. So like I said, it's a beginner friendly simulation tool used in the networking academy. Great for CCNA level training. Matter of fact, this was one of the tools I used uh, when that, whenever I was studying for my CCNA a couple of years ago. So this is one of the tools I use. So it's not the only tool I use, which we're going to get into that later. But Cisco Packet Tracer is the first on my list. It's free, which means that it's not going to hit you in the head real hard for a whole bunch of money out the gate. So, you know what I'm saying? Something to let you get a little bit of experience with it, get familiar with it. Then if you decide to go a little bit deeper, then we can start looking at some different tools to go a little bit deeper here. But Cisco Packet Tracer, like I said, it's your one-stop shop. So the next tool comes from Cisco also, and that's Cisco Modeling Lab. So abbreviated as CML. And basically with CML, they have a free tier that they just released a couple of months ago. But then they also have a paid edition for personal use, which is roughly about 200 a year, somewhere around there, give or take a couple of bucks. So with CML, it's more realistic than Packet Tracer. Uh, it simulates the actual Cisco OS images. It's good for anyone that's studying for CCMP. Also, if you're studying for CCNA, you'll decide to go this route. It's good for everything from CCNA level on up. So like I said, it's more realistic. Uh, it's also, you may need, uh, I'm not sure if you can just download and install this on a regular PC. Most people I see that install this application, most of the time they may have a, a smaller server that they may be using or maybe some kind of virtual machine that, there may be, that they may be installing this application on. But like I said, this is a very good application. Uh, I've been wanting to try it for years. It's just that most of the time, like I said, I utilize either Packet Tracer or there's another application on this list that I like also. But CML, like I said, if you decide to go this route, you cannot go wrong. So CML is what is a good application to use to get that hands-on experience. And then also with CML, it has a lot more different devices that you can add on to your network here. So like I said, it's more realistic than Packet Tracer. It's also something that you can use. And instead of going out buying the real equipment, like I said, if you don't have the funds for the real equipment, you know, this $200 a year, or maybe you can get by with the free tier. Then, like I said, that's, that's the best of both worlds there. You get the you get the experience of the real Cisco equipment, but no I'm saying you don't not without buying all the hardware. So CML, that's second on my list. So the third tool on this list comes from Cisco also, and this is the Cisco DevNet Sandbox. So basically Cisco has a website that I think this website slept on a lot. It's developer.cisco.com. And once you go here, it gives you access to different technologies that you can learn about. It has some a little bit of Python in there you can learn about. It has a great interface because some of the technologies or the learning paths that you choose, basically some of them have a little lab environment built into the web page to where you don't have to download anything at all. 
But then they also have this sandbox that you can go in and reserve time for. So with this site, it gives you access to environments like SD-WAN, DNA Center, ACI, and also API programmability. And then also, like I said, this was something that when I was studying for my CCMP, you know, I got to SD-WAN and then I went on a hunt trying to find different lab and labs that I can use for SDN, SD-WAN because most of the time, you know, I'm one of those people where I like to buy the application that already has the labs in it. So, you know, a lot of times I'm not too big on going and creating my own labs, which that is probably the best way because you get a full understanding. But for me, most of the time, I like the labs where I download it. I got everything set up. I just need to go in and learn that specific technology. So everyone has their preferences when it comes to that. But like I said, this developer.cisco.com website is a good one to check out because you might have or you might find something in there that you can use. And then my fourth option. So this one is not from Cisco, but like I said, this is the one application that I always use. So I'm, I'm a bit proponent from this vendor or from this company, and that's Boson. So with Boson, they're a premium exam prep simulator for Cisco certifications. They give you guided scenarios, performance-based questions, a graded engine. So it's best for anyone focused on the CCNA and CCMP. So along with these practice exams, and of course this one, this application here is not free. So basically you can go in and buy a practice exam from them. The practice exam has roughly about four banks. And then the practice exams, what I like about them is they're legit. You know what I'm saying? There's not nothing that you're gonna go in and see the same questions that you see on the actual test. It's none of that stuff. If you have anything like that, you know, saying you, you're basically taking a you're taking a dump, you know. So with Boson, you're not going to see the same questions. Actually, Boson, to, in my experience, has always been tougher. So I often say when I was studying for my CCNA, I was taking these Boson exam preps. I did not pass, not am one of them, you know, and that's my country accent coming out that am one of them. I didn't pass it, you know what I'm saying? But when I took the actual CCNA certification, I was able to pass that with no sweat, you know, so Boson, I'm a bit proponent for them. If you're looking at this, hit me up. Like I said, I love a lot of Boson products, but then along with the exam prep, they also have a net sim. So their net sim, I roughly have that, I think for CCNA and CCMP, if it hasn't expired yet, but basically it gives you all the labs that you can do that pertains to those certifications. It's roughly over probably about two or 300 and something labs. So. But basically, I used this along with Packet Tracer when I was studying for my CCNA. And then oftentimes when I was studying for my CCMP, I would go into it to do some labs with that. So it has a lot of labs. You don't necessarily go through all of them, but what I like about it is I don't have to build from scratch. So like I said earlier, I'm one of those folks that if I can find a way to get the labs where the lab topology is already set up, I may need to go in and do some basic configurations and then get directly to the technology I'm trying to learn. I prefer to go that route. Now, some of my counterparts, some of my coworkers, you know, a lot of times they would prefer to build from the ground up, which that's good also. It just depends on your preference. You know, if there if I had to choose which option was the best, I would probably say building from the ground up. You know, if you have the time for it, uh building from the ground up is a perfect way to go. But for me, a lot of times whenever I used to try to build from the ground up, and it's probably my ADHD or something kicking in, but whenever I try to build from the ground up, by the time I got ready to implement the technology, you know what I'm saying, my my attention was, was gone. So that's why I found that what worked best for me, if I could get something like Boson that already has the topology set up, I just need to go in, you know, do my configurations, then get directly to the get to get directly to the technology I'm trying to learn. I always found that those type of applications work best for me. So Boson, like I said, is fourth on this list. They 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 got a great product. So you know, saying feel free to go check them out. See if it's something there that may provide some value to you. Quick pause. I like to introduce you to the Law Files. The Law Files is a weekly newsletter to help you start your IT career with practical advice and tips, powered by yours truly. We launched it in the beginning of the year. It's packed with actionable advice, resources, and insights to kickstart your IT journey. The link is in the description as well as pinned in the comments. So don't miss out. Now back to the episode. So this next section, I want to look at some network emulators that may not be Cisco proprietary, 
Uh, so the first thing that comes to my mind is, of course, GNS3. GNS3 is an open source emulator. Uh, it can run the real Cisco iOS images and third party appliances. So it's not just Cisco specific, but the downside to this is you have to be able to get those iOS images, which, you know, legally it's hard to get around that aspect of it. But a lot of people do use GNS3, but basically with GNS3, you have to have the images from these devices. So if you have a Cisco router, you need to have the image for it to load up into the appliance in G GNS3. And then also, if you have a Palo Alto device, then you need to have that iOS in order to load it up into GNS3 also. But like I said, GNS3, a lot of network engineers, architects, everyone uses GNS3. Like I said, it's a good one. I looked into it before, but like I said, it's something that um, once I got to the iOS part, you know, it's kind of it was kind of hard to, to do that for me. Uh, so, but it is something that when I see other people run it, they can create elaborate environments which is good for learning and everything like that because you, you are able to put different vendor devices inside your network topology so this application is good for the ccna and ccnp level so saying so if you're going this route like i said the caveat is you need to have a way to get the ios images legally and then the next application of course is if you mention gns3 you got to mention even g so even g is a web-based emulator also, they support Cisco, Palo Alto, Fortinet, Juniper devices. So it's good for enterprise levels, lab environments used by many CCIE candidates. And it supports large topologies and automation in integrations. And basically, like I said, this is similar to GNS3, where you may have to find a way to get the images to load on these devices. So like I said, with these network emulators, they're real popular. So you can't really have a lab list without mentioning these two applications. So like I said, they're, they're real popular. A lot of people use them. A lot of people swear by them. A lot of people like them. Just for me, like I said, the setup process and then having to figure out how to get images and things like that. You know, for me, it took up a lot of time. Like I stated before, I usually like to get something that's already there, which I can go in and configure it and just do the portion I need to do or learn that specific technology. And then I spend my hour or so doing that and then I'm through for the day. So, but if you're someone that likes to go deep, like I said, GNS3, even G, they're real good applications that you can try out. And then the last thing on my list, which probably should have been number one, is you can actually go out and get the real equipment. So the real equipment in my eyes always will be better because you see certain things with the real equipment you may not see from the applications. But like I said, the applications take up less space, don't need a, a lot of a huge power source. So it's not going to run your light bill up. It's not going to be making a lot of noise out of one room wherever you have everything racked and stacked. So usually I prefer more application based. But if you can go get the real equipment, you can look on places like eBay. They have some cheap 2960 switches. Those are the older switches. You know, that's basically all you're going to need for CCNA. You know, some 2960 switches. Maybe go find you a 2811, 2911, 1941 router. You know, something basic. You know, you just need something to go over the specific technologies within the CCNA, which every technology in the CCNA besides the SD-WAN portion and the programmability portions, most of them you can do from those two devices. So, like I said, you can look at this or you can find this on eBay. Uh, Amazon, you may be able to find at some local shops too, you know, so it may be some local schools or something that's trying to get rid of some old equipment. You may be able to go up and purchase it from an old school also. But a lot of times when I look at some of my coworkers and people that I ran through, ran past or encountered within my career, a lot of times some of the very good ones, I found that they did indeed have the real equipment at their home so one of the like i said some of my co-workers that was real good the difference from me and them i tell you the difference from me and them was basically they had real equipment where they went home and they used their real equipment daily where for me you know i prefer the application base like i said uh boson helped me to get through a lot of it especially with networking so i speak highly on them so but like i said every everything else is good too but 
like I said, I just didn't have the space or the funds for the real equipment. Now, if I had the space and had the funds for it, that might be a route I consider. And then, too, as I start to get more hungry for different technologies, you know, you know, I want to learn some other technologies. So it may end up to where I do start to get equipment. But as of now, everything I've used at home has basically been application based. Like I said, Packet Tracer, Boson. I haven't tried CML yet, but I hear good good news, good good uh experiences from that. So it is something to on my list. So the next thing I probably get more along the lines will probably be CML. But if you got the chance to get real equipment, like I said, at least try it out and see how you like it. And then when we try to decide which one of these routes should you go or which one of these pieces of advice or application should you use. So for me, I'm going to always say you want to pick the gear or pick the software that works best for you. So if you got the space for real equipment, go ahead and get the real equipment. But if you ain't got the space for real equipment, now let's start to look at some of these applications you can use to get some of that experience and some of that knowledge. So like I said, for the easiest and the user friendliest is going to be Packet Tracer. So like I said, you may start out with Packet Tracer, get familiar with that, and you can do a whole lot with Packet Tracer now. So it's not like Packet Tracer 20 years ago. You can do a whole lot with Packet Tracer. So you may find that Packet Tracer is all you need. So like I said, you pick, you want to pick whatever works best for you in whatever, how, how your life is set up, how your daily schedule is set up. You know, you may not want to come home and turn on equipment all day after working a long day at work. You know, you may want to come in, just click on the application link and open up an application, go through, do a little bit of practice and things like that, then you're through. So it just depends on which is going to be more beneficial to you. So all of these will work and all of these will help you get that technical experience. So all of it is going to help you get that hands-on experience with all these devices, you can't go wrong with either one of them. But like I said, some requires more setup than others. Uh, some is going to require more money than others. So like I said, but all of them, I think will get you to the same common goal. It's just about which road that you want to take to get to that goal. So like I said, let me know in the comments if you, if you have utilized any of these uh, layouts or any of these applications or if you like real equipment. You know, just let me know in the comments your thoughts and let me know if it's something that I didn't mention that you use, please put it in the comments so everyone that's looking can check it out. It may be something that can provide them value also. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Hopefully you found some value in this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, you can follow me at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions, you can email me at debtfreeandit at gmail.com. Or you can visit me at debtfreeandit.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.